In today's video, I'm going to be rating every single England player that has played um, a big part in this um, in this year's uh, Euro 2020 campaign. Of course, we know that we did um, that we did lose in the final to Italy, uh, and we were denied lifting that trophy and denied um, ending the 55 years of hurt. It will go on, hopefully. We can end the 56 years of hurt next year in Qatar in the World Cup. But the dust has settled. Now, this is going to be my final Euro 2020 video. So, the flag is going to go for the next video. The border with the England flag is going to go. And with the Euro 2020 there as well. It's going to be back to normal uh, business Uh talking about West Ham United. Um, but I thought I'd do this today and uh, rate every single player. So, uh you know, that's played some sort of part, not just took a penalty in the final. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, the goalkeeper, Jordan Pickford. I've given him a nine. I thought he's been superb in his competition. A couple of shaky moments, but he's kept, he's, he's made some world-class saves. I mean, one just massively sticks to mind is uh, that Jorginho save uh, that, kept us in it for a short amount of time in the in the final yes his positioning could have been better for the first goal against Denmark but we've only could see two goals in this competition and for the Italy goal it was a scrappy and it was a world-class save in the first place to keep it out he's a massive part of that um he you know he looked a bit shaky at times but he was absolutely superb uh and he was a real real rock at the back uh uh, he did play uh, all seven games, 690 minutes, and played and made 16 saves with just two goals, com um, two goals uh, conceded, which is pretty pretty good for a seven game uh, go. Uh, the right back then, uh, I'm going to talk about Kyle Walker. Now, I've re I've re I've really rated Kyle Walker in this competition. I think he's been really really good. I think. At times, he's got us out of difficult positions because of his pace getting back. Um, he's he's got the license to go forward because we know he's rapid to get back and defend. Because uh, especially in the Denmark game, he got us out of trouble uh, just by his pace to catch up the Danes. Uh, and and in and in all of the games, he's he's quite a good threat to bring us up the pitch when we need to. And he's a, um I think he's a really really good defender as well. Superb. I uh, played played six games. Played just shy of six hundred minutes. Zero goals. One foul coming. Uh, his passing accuracy was 89%, which was really, really good, and 40 balls recovered uh, in total out of his six games. Uh, only missed one game. I thought he was absolutely superb in his competition from one superb uh, fullback to another. Now I've just gone straight out and gave Luke Shaw a 10. Incredible in this competition. Absolutely incredible, I think. And what topped off was a goal in the final. Fantastic ball over the top from Trippier and a really well well hit. He, he hit it hard, but guided into the corner to put us in the lead uh, after two minutes. He's played six of the games, played 575 minutes, of course, scored one goal. Committed uh, 10 fouls, 83% passing accuracy, nine tackles, 21 balls recovered uh, and one block. Now, I think he has been crucial to us getting to the final. I think him and Raheem Sterling on that left-hand side at times have looked one of the best uh, left-hand sides I think England have had for a long, long time. And in the whole tournament, I thought when they, were, when they got going, when they had the understanding, uh, the two Manchester uh, players, I thought, I thought they looked incredible. Just just the way they just knew the understanding. Luke Shaw knew what to do. Raheem Sterling knew what to do. We were so, so dominant down that left-hand side at times and massively down to Luke Shaw. Uh, for me, absolutely fantastic campaign for him and he should hold his head high, in my opinion. Uh, right, the next player, uh, the, two, the, the two main centre-backs then, John Stones. I've gave John Stones a seven. I think he's been good. He's been solid, made some, uh, made some really, really good blocks, in my opinion. He's played all seven games, 679 minutes played, two fouls committed, 94% passing accuracy, uh, eight blocks, 10 clearances completed, three tackles tackles 33 ball recoveries um but i think his his partner has kind of overshadowed him in my opinion and that's why i've gave his um his partner in crime harry maguire uh just one one higher than him at eight i think harry maguire at times has looked one of the best center backs in the whole tournament he i've I've definitely doubted this man, Harry Maguire. I've doubted many a time, but he in this tournament has been fantastic. I think he has been another uh, 
another main reason why we've only conceded two goals in this competition and they were both in the semi-final and final. So we went all through the group stage, all through last 16 and the quarterfinals without conceding a goal. And that is massively down to Harry Maguire. It's no nonsense, clear the ball defending. I've doubted him in the past. I still don't believe he's worth the £80 million that Manchester United played for him, but paid for him a fantastic player, I think. And he's got us out of a lot of sticky situations to keep us in games. And uh, he's looked really, really dangerous. And he scored a goal, five matches played, 510 minutes played, uh, one goal, three yellow cards, four fouls committed, 92 percent passing accuracy 34 ball recoveries four blocks 25 clearances completed sums it up because he um has had a fantastic campaign i feel like, I feel like i'm saying that a lot because we've had a very positive campaign let's move on then to kieran kieran trippier i was 50 50 should i talk about this man should i not but i thought uh his his assist for the goal I thought Luke Shaw's got early on in the Italy game. I thought was really, really good. A well, a well weighted, a well were uh, just, just everything about that pass. I thought was really, really good and uh, deserves credit for that. And uh, let's have a look at some of his stats. Only played five games, two hundred and ninety minutes played, uh, two fouls committed, eighty-one percent passing accuracy, fifteen balls recovered, two clearances completed, two blocks, five tackles. I think he's done okay. Um, he's done okay, of course. Fantastic, uh, fantastic assist, but nothing to really write home about apart from that, to be honest with you. Uh, the the centre-back that did start off uh, our Euros campaign was Tyrone Mings, and I've decided to put him in here as well. I've gave him a seven. I thought he was solid. Solid. I was. I've, I've got to be honest. I was a little bit worried with him in the in the first three games of the competition that he played. I was worried, but he did prove me wrong. He was solid. Not much else. I'm giving him a seven. Three matches played. 191 minutes played. One foul committed. 88% passing accuracy. Four tackles. Ten ball recoveries. Seven clearances. Uh, and one block. Very very solid. Right then. Let's move into the midfield and the main man. I think. I think this is fair. I think this is fair. I've gave I've gave both of our central midfielders the same score because I think that is fair. Let's start off uh, with our man Declan Rice, uh, and I've gave him a nine. I think he's he 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 has received a lot of criticism. Oh, what does what does Declan Rice does? There's no point having him here. Jordan Henderson is so much better. Just just I just shut up, honestly absolutely he he has done his country proud he's done him proud and he's done west ham proud in this competition i've gave him a nine and let's have a look at some of his stats seven matches played 538 minutes completed one yellow card six fouls committed 91 percent 91 percent uh passing accuracy and, and, and i'm just looking at that he only misplaced as a central defensive midfielder in seven games he only mispa- misplaced 28 passes one total attempt on goal which was uh which was which was a good effort straight at the goalkeeper imagine if that went in 10 tackles 28 ball recoveries and people don't realize how crucial he is to our to England and and then you bring on Jordan Henderson and we just everything slows down he's invisible there's no real um you know you're not going from strength to strength you're not going from defense to midfield to attack quickly it's just slowly rolling on the floor of Jordan Henderson and Declan Rice is the future I, st- I still can't believe to this day that Jordan Hen- uh, that some some fans thought Jordan Henderson should start over Declan Rice in um in the Euros final, oh my God, you, he must be joking, must be joking. Alongside his partner as well, Calvin Phillips, I've also gave him a nine. I thought those two in the midfield, I mean, we've, I mean, I'll mean, i say it again, for, for the prob- prob- probably for the final time in this video, we've only conceded two goals in this competition. It's down to the goalkeeper, the defence and Declan Rice and Calvin Phillips. Is the reason. Uh, uh, Cal- Calvin Phillips has played all seven games, 665 uh, minutes completed, one yellow card, 12 fouls committed, 87% passing accuracy, four total attempts, one assist, 13 tackles, 32 ball recoveries, and very crucial assist uh, in there. Which was uh, which which helped Raheem Sterling score his first goal of the competition in our first game against Croatia. Lovely weighted ball and sums his tournament up really. I think at times he's gone missing slightly, but he has he's broke up the play well alongside Declan Rice. Those two have had a fantastic understanding and what England haven't had for quite a while. I think 
Let's move on then to Jackie Jackie Grealish. Um, he's prob he's probably disappointed Jack Grealish with the with the lack of game time he's he's had in this competition. Gareth Southgate treated him as almost a luxury. Five matches played, one hundred and seventy two minutes completed, four fouls committed, eighty seven percent passing accuracy, two attempts uh, on goal, two assists, two two tackles, five ball recoveries. Um, and and yeah, I think he. He hasn't had that bursting impact that we expected him to when he started. He didn't start many games. He um five five uh five matches played uh isn't you know completed games or when he started from the start. I don't think. Um, and he'll be he'll be disappointed that he didn't play uh as much football as he has he probably could or should have done or whatever in his competition. But I thought I mean he's he's made he's made two assists. He could have done a little bit better but but I've gave him an eight. Uh the next player, a Mason Mount uh very, very frequently alongside Calvin Phillips and Declan Rice in our midfield. I've gave him a seven. I thought I thought he's done he did okay in the games. Uh one standout game and then in the final he was invisible. No one could tell me he wasn't invisible in the final. Uh he was he was kind of out on the wing and we we could have done so much better with a with a Jack Grealish on that side, with a Bukayo Saka on that side. Because Mason Mount was just Invisible. You just, he just had no impact on the game overall for the tournament. I've gave him a seven. He played five matches, played four hundred and sixty-four minutes, five fouls committed, eighty-five percent passing accuracy, seven total attempts, one assist, two tackles, eleven ball recoveries. Nothing massive to write home about, but I'm but I'm sure he will be slightly proud and disappointed at the same time about his performances in this campaign. Three players left. Then I have obviously deliberately left out players like Jaden Sancho, Rashford, Jordan Henderson because they haven't played uh much but then let's play Bukayo Saka he 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 didn't play a lot but I thought I've got to speak about this man and it's so difficult trying to give this man a rating because he won us a game um he played um I think he played two standout games he won us a game uh I think that was against the Czech Republic and he w- he he wasn't fantastic in one game and then the Denmark game um he he got an assist but uh but they just had a little bit too much physicality for him, and then of course you've got um, you've got the penalty. So excluding the penalty, I'm giving him an eight because you can't just judge and uh, downgrade someone massively just from one kick of a f- kick of a football. Yes, it yes it did cost us uh, another shot at, at in sudden death, um, but but. Overall, his Czech Republic game, fantastic. Um, the other two games had an impact, got an assist, and it's just about that penalty. He'll be he'll be uh, absolutely absolutely distraught to this day still. Um, four matches played, two hundred and seventy two minutes played, zero goals, zero cards, three fouls committed, seventy eight percent passing accuracy, one assist, zero attempts uh, on goal, one tackle, and four balls recovered he will be i'm sure i'm sure he'll be absolutely distraught but with the games that he played uh excluding the penalty he should be very very uh proud of himself uh that is for sure two players left now i was on the brink of giving harry kane a seven uh, um a six sorry I was, I was on the brink this is a very low seven for me oh uh, and in, in a way i probably should have gave him uh a six honestly no, no, awful competition from Harry Kane. He scored four goals. I know somehow he scored four goals, but apart from those four goals, no impact. Nothing was sticking to him. When we were under pressure in the Denmark and the Italy game, they would lump the ball up to him. He was just coming straight back at us. He looked like a lethargic Sebastian Haller at times. Not a good competition from him, but you know, if you read the stats, he scored four goals and you need your striker to score, but not his best. And he's been labelled before this competition as a world class striker. He looks nowhere near a world class striker in this competition. And I should, probably should have gave him a six in the end. He played all seven matches, played just shy of six hundred and fifty minutes, four goals, five fouls committed, seventy two percent passing accuracy, fifteen total attempts, zero assists. Eight on target, fourteen fouls suffered. Um but yeah, not much really else to say about him. Very disappointed. And then my second and final 10 goes to the man himself, Raza Raheem Sterling. Fantastic. Fantastic tournament from him. And I'll look at this and score and see Harry Kane scored more goals than him. 
and I'm like, what? Honestly, but when you look, when you but but when you look at the games and look at the impact that the players have had. Raheem Sterling is levels above Harry Kane in his competition. And that's why he's got three more marks than me in my rating system. Raheem Sterling and Luke Shaw, fantastic down that left-hand side when they got going. Looked invisible slightly at times, but everyone does that, I think. And the impact he has, oh, let's just have a look at some of his stats. Seven matches played, 641 minutes. Um... Three goals, one assist, 14 total attempts, 84% passing accuracy. Those three goals were so crucial, so crucial. And, you know, when you look at the stats, you'd think I'd be giving Harry Kane a 10 if I'm giving Raheem Sterling a 10. But I'm looking on the impact on the game. And Raheem Sterling had so much more of an impact than than Harry Kane. There you go. Thank you very much for watching. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. Thank you very much. That is Euros done on West Ham Unofficial. Uh, subscribe, like, turn the notification bell on. Check out um check out the join button button if you would be um um if you would be helpful enough and would like to support my channel even further by looking at all the perks on the channel membership by clicking either the link in the description or clicking the join button just by the subscribe button. If you could help, um, if you could help uh, the West Ham official channel grow, get more, get better interviews, equipment, and all of that jazz, uh, and by just uh, supporting me from just three pounds a month would be greatly appreciated. And then the next tier up for four ninety nine, you can get exclusive weekly extra member only videos. Nothing's coming away from the channel, but more is added for you guys that want it um, and are willing uh, to pay a small. Fee. Which 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 is going to massively help me out to progress. Thank you very much. Come on, you Irons. Come on, England. I don't even know why I'm saying it. We lost. <laughs> anyway, thanks, guys.